If you heard the news last night, then you know things are about to fall apart. I would suggest that we have no more than 48 hours before our society becomes unrecognizable. If you're ready for what's coming, good luck with that. But if you're not, if you're one of the millions of Americans and people from around the world who have not prepared for what's about to happen, this is the most important video you're likely to ever see. If you're unprepared, but you want to change that situation within the next 48 hours, in this video, I'm going to break it down for you. Hour by hour, minute by minute, what you need to do to get yourself ready for what's about to happen. So if you're still with me, buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy ride. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind because it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey, this is Praxis. First off, how certain am I that we have only 48 hours left? Well, you can never be 100% certain about anything. That's just a reality of life. And anyone that tells you that they are certain is either lying to you or lying to themselves. So you can never be 100% certain about any of these things. I like to think that we probably do have more than 48 hours, and I think a lot more than 48 hours. But here's one thing that is certain. Whether you believe in the inevitability of climate change impacts or civil war, deadly cyber attacks, or geopolitical struggles, going nuclear, not to mention the idea of deadly pandemic diseases spreading across the world at some point. If you think any of those things are possible, likely, or inevitable, there will be a day when we're only 48 hours from everything falling apart. Are you ready for that? If you say you're not, you're smart. Because no matter how prepared you are, I don't think any of us could be fully prepared for any of those situations that I just talked about. But if you think that you're not prepared at all, this is the video for you. I've created a schedule, a 48-hour schedule. If you found out that things were going to fall apart within 48 hours, this is what I would suggest you do, starting at nine o'clock on day one. And since I can't remember every bit of it, I've got it on my Kindle. That's one of the whole reasons I'm doing this video is that there is just so much to think about, so much to remember. It pays to have an action list and it pays even more to do this stuff years in advance. But if you're not gonna do any of it years in advance, at least have an action list and that's what this video is intended to be. So starting at 9 a.m., we're gonna start with online shopping. Now, why online shopping? That sounds fairly uh, risky since we're talking about things like cyber attacks and society falling apart. The only reason you would do this is if you knew you had 48 hours until things fell apart and you knew you could get next day shipping. Now, the reason that I suggest online shopping at all is because the way that a lot of our world has been set up, there are many things that are important for prepping and preparedness that are hard to get just at your local stores. We're gonna talk about a few of those things now. And that's another reason why it pays to do this stuff well ahead of time. Don't wait until the last 48 hours. That's the last time I'm gonna say that, maybe in this video. Let's go on from here. But these are some things that are hard to get at your average local store. So we're gonna grab them online and hope that we can get next day shipping on them. Item number one, we wanna get 50 food grade moisture absorbing desiccant packets. Uh, I suggest a 50 gram size. Those are gonna come in handy later for preserving food and preventing moisture, rot, mildew issues in a lot of your food. Next thing, we wanna get a book about local wild edible plants. It's great to store up a lot of food. That's a really important part of preparedness is uh, creating a stockpile, a pantry, but a pantry is not gonna last forever. You're going to have to you know, transition to something else after that. And the more you can transition to other things like gardening or collecting wild edible plants that are just freely growing for you, the longer your pantry is gonna last. So it's important to start being able to identify plants in your local area. And a lot of them are not as difficult as you think. People uh, ha have the sense that there are just millions of poisonous plants waiting out there for them. And there are poisonous plants out there, but there are a lot of very easy to identify, very common edible plants that if you get a basic book on this stuff, you'll easily be able to identify these things and you can just fold it into your diet. And it, the idea of folding things into your diet is really important because nobody wants to eat an entire meal of dandelion greens. You'd be throwing up. But taking dandelion greens, chopping them up, mixing them in with some rice and some other flavor, uh, you know, flavored toppings, uh, will add that extra nutrients to your meal and you won't even know that it's there. Your body will know that it's there, 
but you're not going to be vomiting up a stu entire stomach full of just like wild edible dandelion greens and plantains or something. And I don't mean the banana plantains, it's a type of just green leafy plantain that grows here in North America. So it's important to get that information, have it in paper form so you have it when you need it. Also, a cast iron Dutch oven. That'd be a great way of cooking meals over a fire. You can probably get that at other stores that are local, but it's easy to get it online. Uh, last thing I have on this list for things to buy online in the very first day at nine o'clock in the morning is a small solar charging station. Uh, you know, you can get a large solar charging station, but it's important to have at least some way of creating electricity because so much of our lives have become sort of reliant on it from electric uh, radios to electric flashlights, a lot of our communications uh, technology, uh, things like a Kindle, which you can store a lot of information on, but doesn't do you a lick of good if the batteries are dead. It's important to have the ability to at least charge things up. So I would suggest a solar charging station that has at least a 50 watt solar pan panel attached to it, at least a 50 watts. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, 100 or 200 watts would be great, but at least 50 watts. And uh, also has a battery uh, in there and uh, standard AC wall outlets that so you can plug, uh, you know, your devices into it. And also USB charging uh, ports because a lot of devices have USB charging uh, directly into them. And that's a more efficient way of using your electricity than converting your DC electricity and your battery to AC and then reconverting it to DC to actually charge things. You'll get a more efficient use uh, if you have USB charging ports on there. And those are very common, so that shouldn't be difficult. So that's it, online shopping, done. Step one. <laughs> Step two, it's 10 a.m. I, I gave you an hour to do that stuff. Uh, 10 a.m. is a grocery store run. It's obvious why you would want to do a grocery store run. That doesn't need to be explained. Uh, the grocery store run that I'm describing now is going to get enough food for one person to last for six months with a good solid 2,000, 2,500 plus calories per day plus nutrition. A lot of the recommendations that you see, uh, you know, for prepping uh, information is like bare minimum, like on the edge of starving. Uh, kind of uh, caloric intakes. But that's not gonna be the reality if you're in a situation where you suddenly are needing to work and do a lot of manual labor, you're gonna need lots of calories. So I would suggest, you know, getting an appropriate amount for yourself. So this is enough. What I'm gonna describe is plenty for one person to last you for six months for calories, protein, fats, nutrition, all that kind of stuff. Let's go. Item number one. 20 gallons of water. Now, you're gonna need a heck of a lot more water than that for six months, but that's gonna get you started, and we're gonna have other ways of getting water later, but we're gonna start off by yourself 20 gallons of water. 100 pounds of rice. Rice oftentimes comes in 20 pound bags. Buy five of them. 100 pounds of flour. To be honest, I never really buy flour in bags that are less than uh, 25 or 50 pounds. <laughs> However many you need to get, get yourself 100 pounds of flour. I would suggest wheat flour if that works within your diet. It can be whole wheat flour or uh, your white flour. You know, I either way, there's gonna be plenty of calories in there. Uh, next item on the list, 100 pounds of beans. Uh, this would be a way of uh, getting some amino acids into your diet. They can be whatever kind of beans you like. I think uh, pinto beans, black beans, kidney beans, uh, yeah, there's all sorts of great beans out there. Get yourself 100 pounds of dried beans. Not canned beans, dried beans. are gonna be a lot less money getting them that way, and they're gonna store really easily. Next, 20 pounds of sugar. Sugar is a critical ca uh, caloric intake for yourself. It's also a great uh, ingredient that you can add to lots of recipes. Uh, so get yourself 20 pounds of sugar. You wanna get 100 cans of assorted vegetables. This could be you know any kind of a canned vegetable you want, whether it's uh, carrots or peas or broccoli, you know, whatever the hell people put in cans. Uh, canned vegetables are something that I do a little bit of here. I usually can my own vegetables uh, or, or freeze vegetables, but if you don't necessarily have a ton of freezer space and you just need to get stuff that's gonna be shelf stable, get yourself 100 cans of assorted vegetables that you'll eat. And that applies to all the stuff. If you're not gonna eat the stuff, don't buy it. 100 cans of tomatoes. I have tomatoes as a special uh, item on here because they're so versatile. You can do so many things with tomatoes. So 100 cans of tomatoes. This could be diced, pureed, uh, you know, whole tomatoes, whatever. 100 cans of canned tomatoes. And I, I would suggest uh, the cans that are, uh, I think like 28 ounces or something like that. Like the, the normal cans, not the giant ones. We're talking about just the normal, like, uh, you know, single uh, serving kind of cans. 
50 pounds of dried pasta. That's another great caloric intake uh, and it will last a long time as long as it's kept away from moisture and bugs don't get into it. We're gonna talk about bugs later. Uh, uh, I would suggest 10 pounds of potatoes. Why only 10 pounds? Well, because we're talking about fresh potatoes and they're only gonna last so long. These are gonna be something you're gonna have kind of at the beginning and they're gonna run out at some point. You may also be able to use them as seed potatoes if you have the ability to start a garden. Next on the list is 50 protein bars and I would suggest Cliff protein bars. Uh, the reason I'm suggesting Cliff isn't because I'm like a Cliff affiliate or anything like that, but I have tried a lot of different granola bars, a lot of different protein bars, and Cliff bars seem to, I'm not gonna say never, but I've never had a Cliff bar go rancid on my shelf from sitting there too long. However they're made, they seem to have a really long shelf life, the ingredients in them are, are pretty good, and they give you a lot of protein and calories in them. I think Cliff bars are a great protein bar, so I would suggest getting at least 50 of them. Next on the list, uh, I would suggest uh, 20 pounds of protein powder. This is just another way of storing amino acids on the shelf in a shelf stable way that doesn't have to be refrigerated. Uh, so 20 pounds of protein powder, I think is a great sort of prep that you can have. It'll sit there and be ready for you when you need it. Next, 50 cans of sardines, canned fish, or chicken. I do a lot of uh, canned sardines here. I've just started getting into a little bit of canned salmon. Uh, I know canned sardines last an enormous amount of time. I know a lot of people don't like sardines though. So if you don't like sardines, you wouldn't eat them. Try something different, but about 50 cans of some kind of canned meat is just another way of getting protein into your diet later on. I'd suggest 15 liters of olive oil. Uh, olive oil is a great way of getting fat and calories into your diet. If you buy them in those really large uh, metal containers, they seem to have a very long shelf life. Uh, 20 pounds of dried fruit. That's a way of getting vitamins into your body, uh, some sugar into your body, and it's also a way of breaking things up. Uh, you know, it's all well and good, and it's not, well and good to just last on rice and beans alone, but you'll, you'll just go crazy and you'll just start vomiting if you don't have some variety in there. So things like having some dried fruit that you can just mix into your diet is gonna be really helpful you know, when you've been going for weeks and weeks, months and months on a diet like this. Uh, 10 pounds of jams and jellies. Uh, they are good for uh, sugar, also getting some nutrients into you, breaking things up with that kind of sweetness. Additionally, if you were in a radiological event, uh, the pectin in the jams is gonna be helpful for uh, clearing some of the radioactive material out of your body. We're not getting crazy into that in this list, but I'm just saying that's a, uh, it's an off-market, uh, off-label use as well. Next, five pounds of salt. Salt is something that is very underappreciated in our society. In fact, most of the time when we see labeled food, it advertises how little salt it has in it. But salt is a really important aspect to people's uh, survival because if you don't have salt, you'll die. In fact, uh, there were stories about different groups within uh, Sub-Saharan Africa where there were people that lived in gold-rich regions and people that lived in salt-rich regions, and they would trade pound for pound gold for salt because salt is critical to life. You can't eat gold, but you need to eat salt. So get yourself five pounds of salt. Again, this is per person for six months. Not, you know, you're not gonna eat five pounds in six months. We went a little overkill on that one just because it is such a critical item. Next, five bags or boxes of baking powder. That's gonna be useful for baking lots of things. It'll uh, allow it to leaven, making biscuits and things of that nature. Uh, baking powder, very cheap, but very useful. And if you get five bags of it, that should last, uh, you know, without going past expiration, as long as you keep it in an appropriate environment. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that at the end. Uh, we wanna have six months worth of multivitamins. That's gonna fill in any holes that you have in your nutrition. Get yourself six months worth of multivitamins. It's insurance, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the last thing I uh, wanna get at the grocery store is two gallons of unscented bleach and a specific type of unscented bleach. It should be made, or it should be based on sodium hypochlorite, hypochlorite, and it should be between five excuse me, it should be between five and 9% uh, concentration. We're gonna be using this later uh, for a number of things. If you were in a pandemic situation, it'd be good for cleaning, but it would also be useful for sanitizing, uh, well, uh, purifying water, uh, disinfecting water of potential life that is in that water and also setting back water for storage. So get yourself two gallons of that type of bleach. Okay, at this point, we're thinking it's probably around 12.30 uh, and it's time to eat lunch. Now, while you're in the grocery store, I'd suggest you get yourself some bread, some fruit, maybe some nuts, you know, some meat or whatever, uh, and uh, take a little private lunch while you're in your car. And at this point, I'd suggest you kind of think over 
what you just got in there. Is there anything else that you want to get? There's all sorts of, uh, you know, little treats uh, that you might consider getting, especially if you have kids, you know, sweets, candies, uh, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables. This might be your last chance to get fresh fruits and vegetables. While you're eating your lunch, think about anything that you might be missing or craving over uh, you know the next several months and do one last run in there and get those kind of things those kind of treats that aren't about survival of your body but survival of your mind and spirit especially if you have kids having some candy treats uh, can go a long way so uh, you took a nice leisurely half an hour lunch and now we're at 1 p.m. next we're gonna go to a camping store now camping stores are almost like it's kind of like a prepping store, what a camping store really is, because if you think about what camping is, is you're stepping away from society, stepping away from all of the support uh, system of society, not all of it, but most of it, for a certain period of time, and, you know, surviving without all those societal supports, uh, you know, while you're out in the wilderness or whatever you might be doing. So a camping store is kind of designed as like a prepping store, and, uh, you know, we're going to be tapping it for some of those benefits. Now, that said, camping stores are also, they tend to be pretty expensive buying things at camping stores. A lot of the stuff that we're gonna talk about here, you could get at way cheaper prices if you start looking around for it now, uh, ahead of time. Uh, things like a, like a frame backpack. Frame backpacks, you go to a camping store, you're gonna probably spend close to, if not over $100 to get a frame backpack so that you can, you know, easily if you need to bug out or something like that you can easily uh, travel without like you know killing your shoulders and ripping out all your tendons and everything some of the carries on your back effectively uh, you know well over a hundred dollars probably for a good uh, frame backpack you go to a thrift store people are always buying these things aspirationally and then getting rid of them go to some kind of old secondhand store you can get a frame backpack for like three bucks five bucks something like that so a lot of the stuff at camping stores you can get way cheaper if you look for it now and get it at, at, at thrift stores. And the first thing, like I mentioned, is get yourself a frame backpack and one for everybody in your family if there's a chance that you think you might need to have to walk somewhere. And you should probably plan that there might be a chance. After that, get some type of bug deterrent, uh, bug spray. Now, I personally don't use bug spray for anything, but I know a lot of people have big issues with bugs. Uh, and uh, you know, if this is something that you're not used to on a regular basis, if it's not something that you're accustomed to dealing with, you probably want to get yourself some kind of a bug spray. Otherwise, they're going to drive you up the effing wall. Uh, there are lots of different natural ways you can deal with them, but you know, you only got 40 hours here. We're not going to be able to learn everything. Get yourself some bug spray if you're not used to dealing with bugs. Uh, you should get, should get yourself some good hiking shoes. Now, buying hiking shoes doesn't mean you immediately have broken in hiking shoes that are ready to use. When you buy yourself new hiking shoes, they can give you some blisters when you use them the first couple times if you're wearing them too long. So these would be something you want to break in, but after society collapses, you're probably not going to be able to find any hiking shoes, so get yourself some now, both for yourself or anyone else in your family that might need to walk. Uh, you want to get yourself a hand-operated water purifying filter and an extra filter. These are what people use when they go uh, camping out in the backwoods. You take uh, one end of a tube, you throw it into a stream, uh, you, you kind of pump through the filter, and it pumps clean water out the backside. It's going to filter out a lot of things. It won't filter out things like viruses. It won't filter out things like many uh, bacteria. Uh, but but it is going to filter out quite a majority of the type of stuff that you'd have to worry about. And then you can uh, post treat your water, uh, you know, for those types of things that might pass through the filter later on. Uh, next thing on the list is quality raincoats. Really important. If you need to move through the environment, you need to be able to keep yourself dry. That could be as simple, honestly, as a poncho. Quality raincoats, uh, you know, tend to be uh, kind of expensive. But if you can get yourself some good raincoats, that's really important because you can put lots of layers underneath. Put a, a quality raincoat on top is both a wind barrier and a water barrier. You can create a really warm setup just with you know layering clothes and having that kind of raincoat on the outside. Next thing on the list, get yourself a camp rocket stove. Uh, rocket stoves are a really efficient way of using whatever kind of fuel you have, whether it is pine cones or sticks or twigs or dried buffalo dung. If you put things like that into a rocket stove, uh, they are going to focus all the heat that comes out of that much more intensely on whatever uh, cooking pot you place on top of that. So you're, you're going to be using a lot less fuel. Uh, you won't waste as much fuel. You won't waste as much time trying to find fuel. You're not going to, uh, they tend to burn cleaner also, so you're not throwing up smoke signals everywhere. And I know some people are concerned about that. Get yourself a rocket stove. You can also build rocket stoves, but if you don't know how to, again, you waited the last 48 hours, buy yourself a rocket stove. 
Uh, last thing on the list is just a book about the basics of backwoods camping to fill in all the holes that we're not going to cover in here. You have plenty of leisure time reading it later. Backwoods camping books are usually uh, attractive to look at. There's oftentimes lots of nice, uh, beautiful color photographs in there. So uh, do get yourself a treat. Get yourself a nice backwoods camping book that'll fill in the holes and give you some reading material for later. That brings us up to 4 p.m. At this point, we're going to do a run to a general store. This would be like, like a place like a Walmart or something like that. Uh, and while we're in there, we're going to be getting a lot of things that hopefully you already have, but I put them on this list uh, because these are the things that aren't just critical to life, but they're really critical to life. So these are some items that if you do not already have them in your house, you want to make sure you get them. Uh, I would suggest getting 10 quality lighters. Bic makes a good lighter. I'm always finding people's Bic lighters that they just lose in parking lots and even when they've been sitting out in rain uh, and they're you know they've obviously been used for a while there's not that much lighter fluid in them they just last for me for years and years of lighting fires i've never actually had to buy a bic lighter or any kind of a lighter because people are always just throwing them on the ground and they can get beat up and they they just keep working so i'd, I'd recommend bic lighters i'm sure there's lots of good ones too but that, that's what i have a lot of experience with get yourself 10 of them 10 quality lighters uh rechargeable batteries in both sides double a and AAA. These are going to be useful for all sorts of different devices that you may have kicking around uh, and it's just good insurance to have those uh, you know in your back pocket if you run across a device that requires one of them. Uh, we want to get a battery powered radio, uh, something that runs on rechargeable batteries. Uh, at least something that's AM FM. If you can get something that gets into shortwave ra uh, radio signals that's great uh, but you want to have at least a quality AM FM uh, radio. If it can be something that can have an external antenna attached to it that's a positive thing as well. You know, the majority of them can't do that kind of thing, but get yourself some kind of radio so you can get some kind of information in and have it be something that can either charge up with like those AA and AAA batteries or, you know, something that plugs in through USB or has its own uh, internal battery. Get yourself a battery powered, powered radio because that is going to allow you to get information from the rest of the world. Now, in an emergency situation, you're not going to believe everything that you hear. You know, whether it comes from the government or whatever, you're not going to be able to believe all of it, but it's best to at least have that information stream coming in so that you can choose, at least have the option to believe or reject different things. If you don't even, if you haven't even heard it in the first place, you don't even have that option. Get yourself a radio. Next, uh, get yourself an AC inverter for your car, if you have a car. Uh, this is something not uh, so that you can necessarily, you know, plug in devices while you're driving, although you could use it for that. But let's say you're not going to go anywhere. Your car and the gas and the gas tank and whatever gas that you're going to buy, and we're going to talk about that, is going to be useful as a another power station. If you can turn your car on, you can run uh, AC through that AC inverter. It's another way of creating power for yourself. So get yourself an AC inverter for your car. Just a small one would be totally fine. They're usually eh, probably not much bigger than the size of this Kindle except thicker. Next, get yourself flashlights. I think most people have flashlights already. Make sure they can run off of rechargeable batteries whether they charge directly or they have a rechargeable, uh, you know, they can accept uh, AA or AAA uh, batteries. Get yourself, uh, you know, some kind of flashlights that you can recharge during the emergency. Get yourself large candles. Now, candles come with a warning that a lot of people don't know how to safely use candles. Are you one of them? Are you going to be one of those people that accidentally burns your house down? And you know what? Honestly, it could happen to any of us. You get into an emergency situation, things aren't where you normally have them. You know, maybe you're in smaller quarters, you have a candle somewhere and it's in your way, you kind of move it and maybe it's a little too close to something. Accidents can happen. So be really careful with candles. If you think you can get around the idea of a candle, maybe you don't want to mess with that because it can be dangerous. But I would think it'd be good to have candles and choose not to light them versus not have candles and not even have the option. Next, get yourself local detailed area maps. This is really important if GPS goes down, if you need to move around, if you want to have a sense of what's going on in your area, if you're listening on the radio to some event happening and they're saying it's, it's happening in such and such an area, wouldn't you kind of like to know where that is? Is that really far away from me? Is that close to me? If that's something that's sending up a lot of uh, smoke or, or toxic material, uh, is that a, a place that I'm likely to be downwind of? <laughs> These are things you want to know. Give yourself local area maps that are very detailed and regional maps. So places that are further away, you'll have some sense of those as well. A lot of us who've just gotten so used to GPS, we don't, we don't even know which direction is north anymore. Get yourself some good maps. Next, large 60 to 70 liter storage tubs. 
Uh, yeah, I would suggest at least one of those. Uh, something with a click on lid. Uh, this is the kind of thing that you'd store like blankets or toys in, but you'll be able to store food in it and it'll protect it from rodents getting into it. Uh, this will be something you'll be able to put things in to give them a little bit of extra protection. If there was water on the floor that could have ruined all your food, if it was in a nice storage tub, it won't ruin your food. Again, if the rodents come in, they, they'll have a harder time getting at it in a storage tub. Get yourself a large storage tub. I'd suggest between 60 and 70 liters. You could do bigger than that if you want. Next, blankets. Uh, these are for layering if things get really, really cold. Uh, now, a lot of us already have blankets in our house, but do you have enough? Do you have enough blankets in your house to keep you warm even if it's really cold in your house? If it's below freezing in your house, do you have enough blankets to keep you warm? If not, get yourself extra blankets. Uh, I have a note to get uh, raincoats on here. If we chose not to get them at the camping store, uh, this would be an opportunity to get them again, possibly at a lower price. Um, but you might want to get yourself some raincoats here. Next, sweatshirts. Uh, sweatshirts, you know, I think most people have a sweatshirt or two, but having some extra sweatshirts can be good for adding layers to your body. You can wear several of them uh, if, you, if you're getting cold. Get yourself extra sweatshirts, extra sweatpants for the same reason, extra socks for the same reason. You may not be able to wash things as frequently, so you want to have extra of these things. If you are washing things, you may need to line dry them. It may not be very uh, dry, dry outside. It may take a while for things to dry. You have extra of things. Underwear also. Uh, additionally, feminine hygiene products. If you have women in your group, this is something to think about. Now here at our place, uh, uh, the woman in our group, she uses uh, reusable stuff. She uses a menstrual cup and she uses um, reusable washable pads. Uh, and you know, between those things, she doesn't really need to use any of the uh, disposable stuff anymore, but if people in your group still use the disposable stuff, get yourself a lot of that. I would suggest here, you know, getting like for a year, at least six months or a year of that stuff because, uh, you know, things get messy if you don't have that. Uh, on the topic of messes, uh, toilet paper and paper towels. Here we use bidets and we essentially don't use any toilet paper for anything other than like, you know, wiping something up occasionally. Uh, but if you don't use the bidet, get yourself plenty of toilet paper, get yourself paper, to uh, paper towels. You're also going to want to get yourself cooking pots uh, if you don't have uh, cooking pots that are all made of metal. If you're going to be cooking outside over a fire, you're going to want to be able to put something over that fire that's not going to melt. A lot of people's pots have plastic handles and things like that, and you try to put that over a fire, it's all going to melt apart. So get yourself uh, some nice metal cooking pots. Again, this would be something if you'd been shopping at thrift stores, you get these things for a song. They're going to cost more going to a general store now, but you know that's the price you pay for waiting until the last minute. Uh, I have a note down here that you could potentially, at a general uh, kind of department store, possibly get a cast iron Dutch oven. If you can, get it here. Even if you ordered it early, you can always uh, cancel the order. And you know, worst case, if the world falls apart and you, know, you can't cancel your order, I'm sure you won't be losing any sleep over that if you have two cast iron Dutch ovens. Last thing on here, two gallons of liquid soap. This is going to be used for so many things, washing dishes, washing yourself. Uh, get yourself some nice, basic Castile liquid soap. That brings us to six o'clock. And at this point, we're gonna be heading over to a hardware store, like a hardware store garden center. I'm thinking of like, like a Lowe's or a Home Depot, that kind of place. Uh, we're gonna be picking up a couple of things there related to the garden and also getting uh, things to prepare your, your living space. For the garden, uh, we're gonna start with a long handled garden shovel, uh, something for you know, digging up your lawn. If you decide, you know, maybe this lawn would be better utilized instead of for grass, for growing some food. You want to have a shovel to be able to turn things over. Uh, we want to get a short garden hose, uh, not necessarily to be watering our garden. Uh, we're going to get to this later. It's going to uh, be involved in draining uh, the system uh, of uh, pipes in your house. It's nice to have a hose for that. If you don't have one, get yourself a garden hose with a regular kind of three quarter inch uh, threads. Just the, those are the standard threads that are always on them. Uh, we want to get a handsaw for uh, trimming tree limbs. This stuff is gonna get into if you wanna get firewood later. We wanna have a hammer. This is gonna be for uh, doing some modifications in your house to uh, keep the heat uh, or the cool in a central area. Uh, and towards that end, we also wanna get uh, five pounds of nails. And I would suggest 10D nails. Uh, 10D nails are about that long or so. Uh, I don't know what the 10 uh, refers to, it's just that's what they call them. Nails that are about that long are 10s when they're a little shorter, they're eights and then sixes. When they're a little longer, they get to 12s and then uh, you know 14s and 16s. 10s would be fine, 12s would be fine, eights would probably be, be fine. I'd say uh, 10D nails if you have the ability to get them. They're about like three inches or so, uh, something along those lines, uh, and get about five pounds of that. Uh, you should get three 100-foot lengths of rope and or paracord. 
lots of things you're going to be able to use that for, from making a clothesline to dry your clothes to um, uh, uh, being able to, you know, kind of secure things, uh, tie things up. Paracord and rope are uh, so useful in so many ways and so easy to buy now versus trying to make rope later. I've made rope before from natural fibers. It's a lot easier to buy it. Uh, electrical extension cord with a power strip. Uh, if you are going to have a central location in your house uh, where you want to, you know, have like a, like a power setup or something like that, you may need an extension cord to kind of bring these in and have a power strip so you can charge different things. If you don't have an extension cord and a power strip, get one here so you can use that for that purpose. Get yourself 10 rolls of duct tape. I don't have a specific purpose for all these 10 rolls, but I bet you will. So get yourself 10 rolls of duct tape, any color. <laughs> Five heavy duty, 25 by 25 or thereabout foot tarps. So heavy duty tarps, about 25 feet by 25 feet, or get yourself, if you can't get tarps or they're more expensive, you can get yourself a six mil thick plastic sheeting. Uh, six mils uh, tougher than the four mil stuff. It's a little bit thicker. Uh, that should be useful for all sorts of things like, uh, you know, sectioning off areas of your home to kind of keep warmth in or keep cool in or whatever. Uh, next thing on the list, uh, you want to get yourself, this is going to sound like a lot, but you're going to go through them fast, 20 five gallon buckets. That's five gallon buckets in a quantity of 20, not 25. Uh, you could get 25. They're very useful. But get yourself at least 20 of these five gallon uh, buckets. Um, oftentimes they're made out of number two plastic. That's high density polyethylene. Number two plastic, uh, HDPE plastic is thought of as being food safe, but some number two plastic does have additives mixed in. If you can get buckets that say that they're food safe, get those. If you can't, you know, you could take your chances and not get any buckets or, you know, take your chances and get buckets. It's up to you, which uh, you're taking a chance either way. I would suggest get the buckets. They're useful. You can use them for storing food uh, to keep it away from rodents, keep it away from moisture. Um, but, you know, you may not be guaranteed to get, be able to get buckets that are, you know, necessarily 100% uh, food safe. And that's a price you pay for waiting to last minute. Next, I would suggest getting yourself some sort of propane powered space heater plus an extra propane tank. And I'm going to warn you, it's really dangerous to use these things inside. And I don't plan on myself ever doing something like this. I have a wood stove at my house and my house can stay totally warm just using that wood stove. It's totally comfy, totally cozy, wonderful environment here at my house. I would never want to heat the inside of my house with a propane heater. I know a lot of people don't have wood stoves, don't have fireplaces, uh, and they'll be in a situation where they have to choose between taking the risk of heating with a propane heater and the risk of not. You take a risk either way. But recognize heating with those things in, inside of a enclosed space is dangerous. You have to understand that danger, but you're going to be facing danger either way. If you have the thing, you know, you can at least think about it later on. Uh, and, uh, and make a decision. If you don't have it, the decision's made for you. Next, uh, get yourself appropriate seeds for your local area. Now, I know a lot of you guys might be wanting me to say, get this seed and this seed and this seed. Different people live in different areas. Different areas have, uh, you know, different uh, growing characteristics. A seed that grows great for me may be terrible for you. Something that works great for you might be terrible for me. You gotta go to your local center, see what's available. What they sell there is likely gonna be stuff that grows well there. If there's somebody working on staff that seems like they actually know something, Go up to them, ask them what are some things that grow really easily in your area, and uh, get some seeds. You're going to want to get heirloom seeds if they're available, not because you want to be all like, oh, I only use heirloom seeds. No, there's a reason for heirloom seeds. Hybrid seeds, you plant the first year, they're going to work great. They're going to give you a great crop. If you cross-pollinate plants uh, in your garden using hybrid seeds, the seeds that get created from those hybrids who knows what the hell they're gonna be. Uh, they could be like actually totally infertile and, and not even grow anything. So if you're getting the heirloom stuff, heirloom means it's something that it's a plant that generation after generation after generation produces seeds that you're always gonna be able to use. So when you grow your crop, you're gonna be able to collect the seeds and save those seeds for next year. Hybrid seeds, there's absolutely no guarantees with those. So get yourself heirloom seeds if you can. If you can't, again, price you pay for waiting the last minute. Get the, get the hybrid ones, cross your fingers. Hope they uh, give you some seeds that you can use the following year. Next, seed potatoes or sunchokes. I think those are great crops. I, I said I wasn't gonna recommend any specifically, but uh, I think it's worth taking a shot with either of those because there's a lot of great calories you can get in potatoes and in sunchokes. And if you can get them to grow in your area, uh, you should give it a try. Last, 
compost mix bags. Uh, soil isn't necessarily going to give you a beautiful garden unless it has the proper nutrients in it. Get yourself some compost bags and get yourself enough compost bags that if you spread them out over the area that you're envisioning growing, like say if the bag is two feet wide by three feet long, putting those all flat down all over your garden, cover your entire garden area with these compost bags, and that would be the amount of compost bags that you should probably be getting. You're gonna take those and you're gonna turn them into the soil later. But that gives you a sense of how much of this you wanna get. That brings us to eight o'clock. Eight o'clock on day one, we are at the pharmacy. You wanna get into the pharmacy and get any medications that you use on a regular basis. There are emergency medication outlets that you can use now where you can get stockpiles of emergency meds for yourself for the, your future. I'm gonna put a link down in the description below to uh, one that I, you know, I've used in the past, it's called Jace Medical. You can get that stuff ahead of time. You ain't gonna get it in 48 hours though. So that's off the table as far as this is concerned. But if you wanna get ready now, Jace Medical is a way that you can get things like antibiotics or prescription medications you have in a, a surplus so that you'll have them during an emergency. You don't have to have this weird ass conversation with your doctor where you're like, I think the world's gonna end. So I want you to give me these uh, you know, extra meds so I have them. Uh, you know, it, it, it baffles me with the number of things that have happened, specifically COVID, where people couldn't get medicines during COVID, the doctors now are back to like thinking that that could never happen again. Uh, so if you wanna get uh, medications that you need ahead of time, Jace Medical is the one to do it. But if not, you're just doing a last 48 hours kind of run, we're gonna go to the pharmacy, get whatever medications that you know that you might need, uh, that you can get. Uh, on that list, I'd add things like painkillers, if you're gonna get painkillers, uh, you know, if this is something that's appropriate to you, different people have different allergies, you gotta know your own body. Uh, acetaminophen, all the things being equal, is going to have a longer shelf life for you than things like ibuprofen and aspirin. So if all things are equal and you can take any of those, I would suggest acetaminophen because it is going to have a longer shelf life. There are other pros and cons of all these different things and we're not gonna get into all the specifics now, but if you just want a general painkiller and you want something that's gonna last a long time, acetaminophen has been proven in many studies to have an extremely long shelf life, decades if kept properly. All right, next, uh, anti-diarrheal medications. Uh, you know, things happen and uh, you know, especially during emergency situations, people, you know, drink things that they shouldn't have drank and you know shit happens and sometimes people get diarrhea you want to have anti-diarrheal and on the other side you want to have a laxative, uh, laxative. Uh, you know that's another thing that can happen especially when you're changing your diet a lot uh, i always recommend you should be eating your regular diet through your pantry that you've set up ahead of time so when there's an emergency situation your diet doesn't change at all uh, you know that's not what we're talking about here with this last 48 hours thing you change your diet dramatically you may need antidiarrheals or laxatives to kind of stabilize you through that period. Uh, I would suggest getting antibiotic ointments such as like bacitracin. Uh, Neosporin is one of the brand names of that. I use that a lot and it seems to have wounds heal up safely and faster all the time. Uh, bandages, tweezers, these are things you probably should have, but I'm putting them on the list. Uh, hand sanitizer, uh, you know, it's an easy way of sanitizing your hands. You're not gonna be using your water as you would with your soap. Hand sanitizer, especially if there's some kind of a, a pandemic situation, you wanna be able to have that. Okay, that brings us to nine o'clock at the end of the day. Now, we ordered some th stuff in the morning. Maybe we bought some of that stuff during the day uh, and we are able to cancel those orders. Now it's the time to do it. Cancel any orders that you had already uh, grabbed during the day. And uh, that brings us to 10 o'clock. So I give you an hour to cancel all your orders. Um, the next thing we're gonna be doing is start to prep uh, the, the food grade buckets or not so food grade buckets for water storage. We're gonna be cleaning all those things out and letting them dry. We're not gonna get into specifics in that video. Lots of videos here on the channel uh, about that. I'm gonna put some links down in the description below to more information on this type of stuff. Uh, but we're gonna wanna be prepping those food grade buckets for water that we're gonna be putting in the next day because we want it to dry between hand because we want it to dry before we uh, start putting the water in. Okay, wake up the next morning, nine o'clock. It was a long day and you sleep in till nine o'clock. So, you know, yesterday was probably kind of a whirlwind. You barely remember what you were doing, uh, but we wanna go through our inventory of what you got. Kind of take stock of everything you have. Was there anything you forgot? Kind of go back through the list. You know, did, did you go down an aisle of a store and you, you thought like something was gonna be there, but it wasn't there. And then you were like, oh, well, I'll just, I'll get that later. And then you forgot to. Go through your list, make sure there's nothing critical missing. Here's some questions to ask yourself. 
How will I stay warm if you're in an area that's gonna be cold? How will I stay cool if you're in an area that's gonna be too hot? Do you have a wood stove or a fireplace? If you have one of those, do you even have firewood? Uh, can you hold out at the location you're at? Uh, is staying a mistake? Would it be a mistake to leave? Uh, you know, if you try to leave, are you even gonna be able to successfully get to where you're going? And that brings us to noon. You're gonna have lunch and you're gonna have something to think over. Are you gonna stay where you are or should you go someplace else? Uh, there, and you know, you're gonna be taking a risk either way. Uh, you know, the reason that you might want to stay is you know the area, you know your neighbors, you know the environment, you know your house. You always have that kind of home field advantage. Uh, you know, if you go someplace else, it's a wild card. And you're not as familiar with things, but are you in an area that's just untenable? Are you near sections of a city that you know are just gonna be in meltdown and you are going to just get uh, swept up in all that? Maybe you need to go someplace. Do you have some place to go? Uh, do you have some place personal that you've set up? If you're waiting to the last 48 hours, you probably don't. Do you have people that you know that might be good people to go uh, and, and stay with during this event? They might be happy to have you. You know, they might like you. Just having more people, uh, if people need to keep watch during, uh, you know, an event where, you know, the police are maybe preoccupied with other things, it's good to have extra sets of eyes. But on the, at the same time, having extra people is extra burden on all the preps that those people uh, put together. Don't show up in anyone's house unless you have their permission to show up. I, I, that's just common courtesy. <laughs> we do that during normal times and we certainly should do that if there was ever some kind of an emergency event. Think about it this way. If you were a prepper and you stored up a year's worth of food for yourself, you're just a single guy or a single woman, you stored up a, a year's worth of food and then your best bud comes over and they, they got nothing, suddenly your year's worth of food is only six months worth of food. That, that, that's, that's a big ask to, to, to ask people, hey, can I just cut all your preps in half? Or if like, if you and your spouse for this one person, can we cut yours down to like one third of what they used to be? Have permission to show up anywhere that you're going to plan to go. But you need to decide that now because everything you're gonna do from here on out is gonna be based on whether you're gonna stay or whether you're gonna leave. So now's the time to make that decision and ask people while the phones are still working. Okay, so we're gonna presume from here on out that you're actually gonna stay. Uh, so if you are gonna, because if you're gonna leave, you just leave at this point. Uh, you know, grab some fuel and, and leave. Uh, if you're gonna stay, you wanna chat with your neighbors. Now this is tricky, uh, you know, for the same reason that you didn't prepare for any of this stuff. You know, talking to other people is, it's risky in the same way that, you know, other preppers would be nervous about talking about their preps with you. The last day you spent getting a lot of stuff and you know, we just talked about the idea of if you didn't have anything and you went to some friend's house, how would they take it? If you, tell, if you talk to your neighbors now and you tell them your concerns, A, you know, they might think you're crazy, but let's say they don't think you're crazy, uh, but let's say they don't have the uh, discipline to get up off their butt and actually do something for themselves. What you've just done is you've told them that you have these things and they're probably gonna remember that. You know, even if they don't believe you and they think you're crazy, you know, three days from now, when things are looking kind of grim, they're gonna remember that you said that you bought all this food and it's all over at your house. So you need to be careful about that. But at the same time, uh, all the people around you can be potential allies. You, turning a potential uh, adversary into an ally is the best way of dealing with any kind of adversarial situation. So if you can talk to your neighbors and you think that they can be spoken to in a way where they will take what you're talking about kind of seriously and they will take some kind of preparations, that might be a good idea to, to do. But it's, it's tricky and you really have to weigh it based on who the people are because showing your hand to people and letting them know what you have is going to be something they'll remember when they are in severe need and they see their children, if they have children in severe need. Uh, desperate people do desperate things. So uh, the best thing you can do is try to keep them from being desperate by warning them, but that only works if they heed the warning. You have to make your own decision on whether you think they will. Uh, next, that brings us to 1.30. Get some cash. Go to a bank, take some money out. That doesn't mean you're gonna take the money out and spend it right away. Take some money out, have cash in hand. When electronic uh, systems go down and you can't use things like credit cards, cash is the only way that you can do it, cash or barter. And this happens so frequently in just normal life, you know, without massive SHTF events, 
uh, it baffles me that pe people still don't tend to keep any cash on hand. It's not a month that goes by where you don't hear some story about like, you know, the ATMs in some area went down or like you know, the credit card processing in this area went down and people, you know, weren't able to, you know, buy anything because they didn't have any cash in their pocket. Get yourself some cash, you know, at least some cash to hold you through a couple of weeks. You know, several weeks into the future, depending on the nature of the emergency, people may not value cash anymore, but they will at the beginning. So get yourself some cash because they're not going to value your credit card if they can't run it through a credit card reader. Next, that brings us to two o'clock. Get some fuel. Uh, fuel is going to be really important, uh, you know, both if you were going to want to bug out somewhere uh, and you, you need to drive or if you you know, we're going to be staying into, in your house and you just want to have an energy supply. You can run your car. If you've got that AC inverter for your car, you can, uh, you can run that. So you'll have a source of electricity with the fuel. I would suggest not only filling up your gas tank, but also getting some of those red gasoline containers. Uh, unfortunately, the modern design of those is awful. Uh, the old design was really simple and elegant and easy to use. The new design, which is like safe and uh, it's supposed to protect us from ourselves. It's got like all this venting and all these moving parts. They incessantly jam up. They're always a problem. They're always like leaking and spilling when you're trying to work with them. Uh, it baffles me that they still exist, but they, they're still what, what people sell. If you're buying gas containers, you're probably going to get those. So also get yourself a funnel. You're going to need a funnel to get gas out of those things later on without spilling it like crazy. You can either buy a funnel or if you get some old juice bottles, like those, you know, plastic half gallon uh, juice bottles that like, you know, cranberry juice and stuff like that comes from uh, the grocery store. You can chop the bottom of those off and they, they'll kind of work as a funnel. Get yourself some kind of funnel if you are buying these new fuel tanks because they're awful. They're awful. And that's the kind of thing you only know if you, uh, you work with them. That's why it's, a, again, a good idea to practice st this stuff ahead of time. Because who would know if, that if you buy a, a gas tank uh, or a fuel a storage container that it's like, oh, well, I know these are going to leak everywhere. You wouldn't, you wouldn't assume. You wouldn't assume that. Okay, that brings us to three o'clock. You got to get ready to defend yourself and your family. I'm not going to say your house because depending on the legality of where you live, you may not be allowed to defend your house and your food. Uh, so we're not going to suggest or advocate for that. You're going to defend yourself. You're going to defend your, your family from harm. And I'm not going to suggest specific ways you could do that because the laws are so different all over the place. There are, uh, if you're talking about firearms, there are some firearms that are legal in one place, but not in another. There are, uh, you know, certain types of uh, blade weapons that are legal in one place and not another. There are some states uh, here in the United States where if you take a, a stone and you wrap it in a piece of uh, rope, that becomes an illegal weapon. If you tie two sticks together, that becomes an illegal weapon in some places. Slingshots in some states in the United States are illegal, unless you belong to a slingshot club, in which case it's not illegal. It, it, you know, how does that make sense? So whatever your situation is, find whatever your legal ability to protect yourself is and take the law seriously because you don't want to run afoul of the law because in an emergency situation, law enforcement initially is going to be very weak, but then it's going to bounce back and probably be kind of overkill. And you don't want to be trying to survive through an emergency event in a jail cell. Do things legally to the best of your ability. And you know, that's the best that you can do, but have a plan because in emergency situations, it brings out both the best in people and the worst in people. And that is a fact. That is a fact that it brings out both the best and the worst in people. And you can uh, talk about and think about just, you know, the stories of, uh, you know, uh, people rising to the occasion and being at their best, but you can't forget about all the stories where people do the opposite. You got to plan for both, hope for the best, plan for the worst, because both are probably going to happen. Next on our list, it's five o'clock. It's ready to settle in. Now, I'm not going to get into a lot of the specifics here. Uh, I've written uh, quite a bit down. I actually, I have this all in a document. If you're interested in seeing the entire document, uh, you know, it's all there ready for you to print up and everything all with all the bullet points and everything. Uh, I'm going to put a link down in the description to my Patreon page because on my Patreon page, I can post uh, links for documents to, for people. And, um, I think I'm going to post this one for free. You don't even have to become a member. Uh, if you want to support this channel for as little as a dollar a month, you can go to Patreon and just a dollar a month helps to support what I do here. But I'm just going to put this one up for free for people. So if you want to get this document uh, of this rundown, it's going to have all the information uh, over there. Uh, so 
uh, patreon.com slash praxis prepper. And then there's, uh, there'll be some post or something and, and I'll link to this document in that post so you can download it if you want to. Um, I'm gonna go through a little bit here, but there's so much here that it, it goes beyond the scope of a YouTube video. Um, but essentially, we need to get ready to settle in. You need to uh, imagine your house not for what it has been or what it, what it was, but what it, it can be during this emergency. Houses can't survive under most circumstances the loss of the, the, the grid system. Uh, if you have, uh, you know, water pipes running through your house, which you almost certainly do, uh, and it's cold, those are gonna freeze. When they freeze, the water expands. As it turns into ice, they crack. When it uh, melts back, again, they dump everywhere. You're gonna have to clean out all those pipes. That goes for uh, hot water radiators as well. Those all have to be drained. Otherwise, you're gonna have a huge mess in your hand. You can have sewage backing up into your house if you don't prep for it. You know, all, all of the, the rest of this document is all about the little things that you need to do, you know, between 5, 5 p.m. on day two and, you know, between then and, and when things kick off. Uh, you have to consider the, uh, the danger of heat, uh, finding the coolest place in your home, uh, danger of cold, finding the warmest place in your home. Uh, th th there's a lot to go over, uh, you know, things like outside air, prepping your house for, uh, you know, if there's toxic uh, chemicals flying through the air, uh, there's a lot to consider. So for the rest of this, I would suggest get the document. If you're really interested, read through it. There's a reference to human centipede at the end of it. I don't know if that's gonna turn you on or turn you off, but if you listen to the, this much of this video, you're probably serious, so you're probably interested in checking that out. That's it. I hope and presume we are not within 48 hours of a major emergency event of a complete collapse of our society. But again, if you believe in the idea that climate change is a real serious threat, if you believe in the idea that cyber threats are a real se serious threat, nuclear war, you know, civil war within our country, civil uh, unrest, if you believe that these are real threats, and there's hardly a person in our country here in the United States that doesn't believe these things are real threats. You've got a lot of conservatives that like to believe that climate change isn't happening. You have a lot of like uh, you know, liberals that like to believe that a civil war could never happen. But no matter who you are, there's probably at least one of these things you think isn't just possible, but is likely. And if that is the case, someday there will be a day where you wake up some morning and unbeknownst to you, that is the moment where you only have 48 hours left. I think it's best to take care of this stuff ahead of time. But if not, you get this video, you get this document, and you'll know what to do. But the reality is, even this, it's barely enough. So if you can start early, if you can start now, do so. Thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another one that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.